So One Piece film Red, The Year of Shanks, brought us the reveal, that, like the Gorse pretty much said it, that Shanks is related to the Figurlan family. Their connections are strong. Now, of course, we all know that Shanks recently was revealed to be born from a treasure chest. The Roger Pirates found him, and honestly, at one years old, and of course, they're alluding to him, they're finding him at God Valley, where Rox D. Zebek went up against Roger and Garp. Of course, Celestial Dragons were involved. Of course, slaves were involved. Of course, Whitebeard, Big Mom, Kaido, Shiki, and their whole crew was involved. There was a lot of involvement in this moment when it comes to the God Valley incident. Just a couple chapters ago, Dragon talks about the Holy Knight, and the Holy Knight we saw looked exactly like Shanks' silhouette. Now, am I saying this is Shanks? No, but it looked exactly like it. And then we get this amazing chapter, One Piece chapter 1080. Six. What a chapter to bring us the final reveal of Shanks's father or uncle or whatever he is to Shanks, but he's definitely related to Shanks. And this could lead to how do I say this? Shanks having a brother. So honestly, the excitement is real. It kind of feels like Sanji a little bit. Sanji and the German and all that stuff we were getting in that arc, of course, Whole Cake Island that led into Wano. So I'm getting the vibes of that, honestly. But I do want to say this there was a lot of Celestial Dragon talk in this chapter, and I think I'll just dive into all of it before I get to Shanks. So in this chapter, we see Sabo, of course. Well, we don't really see. We see we do see Sabo, but we see the Gorsei speaking on Sabo being surrounded by D's, like of course Ace, like of course Luffy, like of course Garp, and of course final but not least, it's Monkey D Dragon. They all have a checkered fate, and this Gorsei pretty much says Sabo has a checkered fate for being surrounded by these D's. Now of course, we all know that Sengoku said the exact same thing when talking to Law, when Law revealed that he was a Willa D member. So honestly, it was very cool to see it all being tied together. Oda does, does, doesn't do things randomly, he always connects things, that's why people find so many for shadowing in one piece then we finally got the reveal Imu reveals that the weapon wasn't uranus it was actually called mother flame a weapon built by vegapunk vegapunk's genius is just it always impresses me how he's able to do these things of course Imu wants to test mother flame the weapon on lucia kingdom and pretty much the mustache gorise says which we finally got to name this chapter which i'll talk about in a, in a few he says wait there's people a lot of people there and Imu says i don't care and of course this was just interesting to see that the dialogue there uh obviously they ask what's the reason for you wanted to use on lelouch kingdom and Imu says it's close like the answers are very very spooky like Imu does not care about people and honestly, it was very cool to see this dialogue of Imu wanted to destroy the Lucia Kingdom. So now we know that Imu is a villain. Like, that is confirmed. Like, the whole Imu, uh, you know, there's some characters who look like, and how do I say, anti-heroes? No, no, Imu is a villain right now. That was a villainous move right there. And of course, we got all the names of the Gorosei. And I think this is such an important chapter. It's called the Five Elder Stars. And I'm going to talk about every single Gorosei before I get into the Shanks figure or land stuff. But I want to talk about the first one is Saint J. Garcia. See he is known as the warrior or military god of science, defense, and he replies to Imu saying, please wait as we prepare the weapon. Obviously, this would be his territory, Vegapunk and him's connection strong. He even talks about how he met Vegapunk a while back and how this is such an unfortunate way of events turning out. Now, of course, it makes sense that he's going to Egghead Island because, of course, he's the science, he's like, they call him the god of science defense. He's going to go to Egghead Island and we see in his double ability, we don't really see, but we see he has a power that's a very hellish looking like Sabo's head. So I can't wait to see Luffy versus the god of science defense go at it now we already had saturn's name but we guess the four other gorise we got of course saint marcus mars and i'm not gonna lie to you this gorise like this name saint marcus mars i can notice the memes that are gonna happen with this name like we got with saint jay garcia saturn and whatnot but i do want to say this marcus mars is the warrior god of of course, environment, the Lelouch Kingdom, and he says Lelouch Kingdom citizens ha show were showing signs of rebellion. So, he pretty much comments on how the kingdom was already showing signs of rebellion. He's giving a justification on destroying them. Obviously, I feel like for some reason, I feel like the Gorosei State don't really agree on this extreme measure, but they have to because Imu runs the world, so they have to give it some sort of justification. They have to give it something for to keep, to keep them sane in a sense. Now, of course, this chapter made this Gorosei I'm about to talk about. 
about next look like the main gorsi i've always said it was either going to be the the saturn the guy with the mustache or the guy with the samurai sword as the main gorsi and in this chapter it was looking like mr mustache himself who we finally get a name for because he was the middle of all the gorsi his name is saint topman valkyrie now of course i'm thinking this has to do with mercury but we'll get confirmation when translations get a little bit better he's the warrior god of law and if he's the law, you know they say what the law says goes. And honestly, that would be cool to see because he says it will set a good example when talking about Lucia Kingdom being destroyed. Uh, also, this is the same Gorse who was like saying there's people, there's a lot of people there. So he is the first Gorse we've ever seen talk back to Imu. So honestly, he's looking leader, like he's a leader of the Gorse, and I'm hyped to see if he actually is. Then, of course, the next Gorse we get is called Saint. Ethan Baron Nasjuro, aka Venus. I think it has to do with Venus, but I could be wrong. He's known as the warrior god of finances. And he was our favorite Gorosei from time, the Samurai Gorosei. Like, honestly, with this Supreme Grade Sword, we always were focused on this character, on how he could fight Zoro or Miyok or whoever he fights. And we see him say this, we can use that power as we wish eventually. Pretty much talk, it's like, honestly, it, I think it has to do with finances, I'm not too sure, but he, money talks, and this Gorosei, there's gonna be a lot of Vince McMahon money 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 memes coming out of this one and last but certainly not least we always thought this Gorse was like the fodder Gorse like obviously he's not a fodder but we're like we feel like he's the last Gorse he looks the youngest he was informed he, he looked like he was lost when Luffy's Delphi building the last episode is being revealed he's like why would the world government hide this and like honestly he looks like a rookie Gorse remember it's funny to say but honestly that's what the vibe we get off this character and so it's not surprised that we get his name last he is Saint Shepherd Jupiter. Now you have to understand, Jupiter, I believe Jupiter is the biggest planet uh, in the solar system. I could be wrong, don't quote me on that. So he could be, since the youngest, he could be the strongest. But I do want to say this, when it comes to Saint Shepherd Jupiter, he is the warrior god of agriculture. And honestly, he says it will put an end to the long withstanding conflicts. Uh, and honestly, that is very cutthroat. Pretty much saying that all the problems that they were having on the island since they don't exist anymore it's an end like in an end it means to an end uh honestly so i thought that was very interesting to see their dialogue their names be revealed and just some key things to look at when it comes to their titles the titles they have when it comes to military warrior gods of different divisions now we get to the actual juicy part of the chapter what i've been trying to talk about and that is of course mary jo was and we see the celestial dragons are crying we have no food we have no bread all we have is cake and honestly i love it it, it might be sick of me to say this to see people suffering and i'm loving it but these celestial dragons are not real people guys but i do want to say this the celestial dragons crying did bring a smile to my face i feel like thanos right now but i genuinely mean it when i say that but of course we got the confirmation we've been looking for for so long guys the king of god valley and supreme commander of the holy knights of course, we finally got it. He executed a celestial dragon. Pretty much, we all knew the Holy Knights were determining what happens between the celestial dragons. There has to be some sort of police system there in Marriage Was the Holy Land. It can't just be everyone do whatever the hell they want. But of course, we got Figurland Garling, Saint Figurland Garling. Now, me personally, I have a theory that I believe that he wasn't always a celestial dragon. I think he was the King of God Valley and made a celestial dragon after that event for the things he did. And we probably thinking, what did he do during that event? Well, let's talk about it. Well, we know Wiper when he met Shank said the the scar that I have aches when I see your face, and we always thought he was talking about Roger. And then of course we had the theories of rocks, but now we know he was probably talking about. Figurland Garling. Yes, Garling was the man he was talking about, this old man who looks incredibly powerful, the leader of the Holy Knights. And if he was able to scar Prime Whitebeard, like that just means he's incredibly powerful. Now, I do want to say this when it comes to uh, this is all speculation, it hasn't been confirmed yet, but if you can able to scar one of the strongest, pretty much the vice captain of the Rock's pirate crew. Yeah, you're definitely gonna get promoted. Now, of course, it all makes sense when Shanks met the Gorosei because Shanks is part of the Saint Figurland family. So he's a celestial dragon 
kind of it's not really 100 percent we're still iffy on it so seeing them say hey this is not your department what if shank's department of course is the holy knight stuff and what if this is the craziest part guys what if the character that met the gorse wasn't even shanks what if it was the son of bigger land garling shanks's brother and what if he met to talk about red hair shanks that pirate that yonko and how he's a part of the bigger land family now if we see a situation where shanks has to fight the bigger land uh, son of garling like that would be crazy Honestly, it's giving me German vibes, but honestly, this is just high final saga. Ichiro Oda was not playing around. We're getting so much new developments. And as a fan of One Piece, I'm loving it, guys. I'm truly loving it. Now, of course, I do have to talk about the sadness. There's two sad things I have to talk about. Don Kehito Monsgard from the Fisherman Island flashback. This saint, this celestial dragon that got changed from Otohimo's words. Let's be honest here. He was doing so many good things during the reverie. And the figure line Garling says, you... Pretty much someone who saves trash, uh, pretty much someone who protects trash is less than trash. So we find out that Figurland Garling is just pure evil and Don, Don Quito Mossgard is taken out. He's dead. It's kind of a sad thing to happen, but it's the final saga. We knew these things were going to happen. And the last thing I want to talk about is, of course, the one month break in One Piece. We're getting a one month break in One Piece. And the reason why is because each older has to do surgery on his eyes for astigmatism. So honestly, I think this is a good thing. Last night, each order went on a break we've had everything that happened after wano which has just been splendid so this break is probably going to bring us fire events the egghead incident after egghead the elbaf arc maybe even some stuff the endings of garb versus aokiji maybe get a beginning of garb versus blackbeard shanks versus blackbeard like so many different things could happen Kirifid Luffy is on the prowl. He has three road Pono gifts and all he needs is one more, one more. The man marked by flames, the whirlpool. We have so many developments. The revolutionary armies making their action. The holy knights going ham. Guys, it's all starting. The Gorsi names are revealed. Their powers were so teased. The Imu's powers were teased. Uh, Vivi revealed to be a D, guys. It's happening. So, Oda, take that one month break, come back, and finish this wonderful series we've been following for so long, guys. It feels kind of weird, but One Piece is ending, and I'm excited. I'm truly excited that One Piece is ending, guys. Click on the end screen right now if you guys want to watch my Big Mom Return video. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a good watch if you guys really enjoy that type of content.